This is the hardest Transport Fever 2 series on YouTube. I'm using a heavily modified version of the game that adds literally hundreds of new things, such as taxes and rival companies, as well as story elements like military takeovers, pirates, natural disasters, and much more. It's the biggest size possible in the Transport Fever 2 game engine at 24 by 24 kilometers, and I created the hardest map I could. Additionally, at the end of each episode, I'll be asking you what you think should happen next. So join me as we begin the brutal Transport Fever 2 series. Okay, so what we need to do, of course, to start off is to set up the basics. So before the video, I came around and I had a look around the whole map for the best place to start. And for those of you who are eagle-eyed, you've probably already noticed a great opportunity here because there is two oil wells over here and there is a oil refinery and also a petroleum refinery up here. And guess what? Lumpkin wants petroleum. That's a really handy thing to do. And another thing that means is with the industry that's going to be growing in Lumpkin, we can start to do other products. So for example, we can make a shipyard and then we can start doing shipping, which is great. Because that's another thing in this Brutal Mode series, for a town to produce things like vehicles, it's going to need industrial resources. Let's get started with this production line. I've got a loan down here of 5 million. We are probably going to have to struggle to pay that back, honestly. That's a lot of money, and we're definitely going to spend all of it on probably just this line, because, wow, Brutal Mode is expensive. I'll show you in just a second. Um, so let's get started here. We will build a road, and obviously the cheapest road, I believe this one is. Uh, we will go with a straight piece of road, and we're going to just build across here and get it as close as I can, and we'll pop that in there. That's 30k for that piece of road there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll go along here, we'll grab a little bit of a curve, and I'm going to actually bring this down. I could make the road flat, and the reasoning for making it flat would be the vehicles have a lot smoother of a time driving on a flat road, and, and they're going to be accelerating and decelerating less. They'll be at a constant speed, but by going down, we're actually going to save a lot of money in the short run, which is what we need to be doing right now, because as you can see, uh, this thing is expensive, 5 million is not a lot of money, uh, so we really need to conserve our dollars. I'm going to try and make it as straight as possible where I can, but then again also there is a beach here, so I'm just considering is it going to be cheaper to go down the beach? Probably, because it's flat. So it's not really worth building a road down here, because as you can see, look at that, nearly 200k for that road. We're not doing that, but I, there is actually another thing that you might not have noticed we can actually do. If we go in here and then we're going to put one of these guys down, now this is it's still going to be quite expensive, sure but it is going to save a lot of money. I'll just straighten up a little bit there. Uh, but it is connected, as you can see, so it will do the job. And it'll plug that in. And uh, then we can bring our road around here. And then this road, can we plug in here with no issues? It's a little bit tall for me. Can we just lower it down with the N key? Maybe just up it a little bit. Um, that's looking pretty good to me. Uh, yeah, 151. Can we get it any cheaper? 139. It's looking like that's the cheapest it's going to be. All right, we'll go with that then. Plug that in there. Excellent stuff. All right, now this is hooked up to there. Good, good, good. Uh, and then this is hooked up to over here. Well, we're going to need to stop here as well. So we'll grab a building. Two on the right, one on the left. And we'll spin that around and put that right at the entrance. Now, the reason I've done three platforms here is simply because there is two stops. And also, we're going to have to pick up the oil that's being made and deliver that somewhere. So that's why I've done that. I suppose I could do with two stops. That would work. I mean, neither of these situations are ideal because they're still going to be dodging and weaving and there'll be a whole load of traffic around here, I'm sure. Uh, but that actually reminds me, that's a good idea. Let's go to configure and what we can do to deal with that traffic straight away is we can put on here a another entrance and this should solve all the traffic issues. I can just plug that into like, I'll try and make it nice and straight if I can, um, but it's going to do some weird junction here because that's what Transport FIFA does. Uh, but yeah, if I go like that, it's it's pretty old. Like it's all right, that a little bit funky, but yeah, pretty good. And then that means basically they're going to pull in here and they'll go straight through. Uh, and that's going to save us a lot of money, believe me. We're going to put down a road depot here because it's probably just the best place for it, honestly. It's got close proximity to everything where we're going to need it. Uh, plus also it's near the town, so we can reuse it for that. I don't think there's a better spot for that. And also it's in line with that. Oh, Oh, I'm actual god at aesthetics right here. <laughs> we might actually have enough money here. I, I'm going to risk it and I'm going to go to the other refinery over here. This might be a terrible idea. Who knows? So if we come off here like that and then bring that up this way. Actually, there's a hill here. Let's have a look. Uh, so we've got to go that way then. Uh, probably, haven't we? Around the hill. Ooh, okay. That's not great because it's going to be going through a residential area. But it'll have to do. Okay, that's looking good. I did spend a lot of money there. Nearly a million. But I think it will be worth it because we are going to be shipping. <laughs> Look at this funky road. That is uh, is really, really wonky there. Wow. Uh, but let's get our stop over here. I might actually use the same technique I used here just to save a bit of money. But it is pretty flat, like for the most part. So I'm not so sure. Can we get away with that, I wonder? Let's put a uh, truck stop in. So we'll go like that. Can it? 
Is that gonna is that gonna save us money? I wonder. If we put that in like it barely barely fits in, but if we put that like about there maybe. Uh, I I have put it forward. I could have saved a bit of money by putting it further back, but I actually want to put a few more cargo places in. Ah, that's annoying. Okay. Um, I can't really afford terrain modification, like at all. Because that was 100k right there. Uh, <laughs> if I put that there, I, the only reason I just want an extra one because I found out that is generally the best number to have for if you are like picking up from a raw resource. So that's the only reason I've done that really, just from my experiments. That is is one expensive and one steep road. Wow. Okay. Can we make this like a little bit? Hmm. How? Oh, that's not bad. Okay. If we do that, and then ah oh, yes, problem solving at its finest. There we go. And then bring this around here, and then bring that into. Into there. Awesome. Brilliant. Right. Awesome stuff. Right. If we go to new line and we'll go from this place and then we'll go to drop off there and then we'll go to that place and then drop off there again. Make this a crude color. So we'll go with black and then we'll call this lum for lumpkin and then fuel one. There we go. Line one for fuel. Excellent. Right. Let's have a quick look where this is actually going. So we're going up here to pick up. That's perfect. Now you need to be full, don't you? So we'll set that one to full, going into there, and that one's dropping off. And then we're going to Lumpkin Sidings, so we'll make this one full because it's picking up again. And then back to Lumpkin West. Now can we get this one on platform two? Because that would be great. Yes, we can. There we go. That's what I want to do because I want to pick up on this one because then this means that you actually have a much easier time. In fact, what I could do, I suppose, is I could have a... Can we try this, actually? If we put a street access on there... Ooh, this might work. If we do that and then put an out gate like uh, there. Yes, that's better. Okay, so what we'll do then, if we'll, le we'll leave it like that and I'll change it back to what it was. So we go Lumpkin West Platform 1 and then Lumpkin West Platform 2. There we go. That, that means, so these guys are also having the most efficient route out of all of these three options. Uh, but it also means this guy won't have to be waiting in their traffic because it's got a, its own route. So that should be pretty good. Nice. So now we've got that sort. We need some vehicles, of course. So let's go ahead and purchase some horses from Lumpkin here. Now, basically, I need a road depot in every single city if I want to purchase from them. That's the arrangement. But it's very different for ships and trains. But more of that when we get to it. Absolutely loads more to come, you guys. It's such an awesome series that I've got planned for you guys. But let's go road depot and let's get some vehicles here. So we're going to buy some horses. Uh, we're going to get, like, let's say, I think we'll start off with just five. Because I definitely know I'll need more than that. But five is a safe number because five means that it's kind of the point of, okay, we might lose some money, but we won't lose loads of money if it horribly goes wrong because five is only like a hundred grand, basically. So my earnings are actually minus 2.3 million at the minute. We need to try and make some of this back with these, uh, these horses here. So let's see if they can do it for us. By the way, if you like what I do, press the subscribe button because it always helps me out. Now, let's have a look at our line here. You can see we didn't make too much money at the start, but I've left it running just for a minute or two. And actually, we are picking up profits, which is really good. And the reason for this, the first bars in this chart here, it only picked up from the one side, which is over here. And now it's gone from both sides. We're actually getting double, which is fantastic. That's just the way I set it up to work. And by the way, I would recommend if you guys are doing a line that you actually use just the one line to pick up from two places. It's very handy to do. Later game, I can understand maybe you would want to do it differently. But uh, early game, it's definitely a good time saver. Now, maintenance in brutal mode is very tricky, like everything. Maintenance is basically an amount of money you pay for everything you build. That includes literally everything. I'm talking roads, industries, vehicles, um, buildings for like depots and stuff. Everything is charged. And if we go to this chart here, you can see that we might be selling goods here, but the maintenance of the vehicles and the maintenance of the roads and the infrastructure is significantly more than the profit we are making. So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna buy every single horse I can from Lumpkin, and we're gonna stick it on these lines to be transporting more oil, because I think the issue at the minute is this private company here is just not getting enough from us. And I think if we supply more oil to them, they're gonna be more interested in actually working with us. So let's go ahead and do that now. And this introduces a rule in this Brutal Mode series, one of many. So the rule is the horses I can purchase are from a town, which is the residence divided by four. Now this number will change of course later on when we step out of the era of horses, but that's quite a while away. So 143 divided by four is 35 vehicles, give or take. So if we duplicate one, two, three, four, five, six times, that's 35 vehicles and they will cause a humongous traffic jam, I can guarantee. But that is a heavy investment, sure, but it might actually work. Let's find out. 
Here they all come. That is a massive loss. That's 864,000 that has just cost us. And that's going up because these guys are still being uh, maintenance paid for. About 1k maintenance on all of them right now. That's why that number is absolutely insane. Uh, but we should, let's look at all this. There is a lot of supply here. Okay, we should be good. I am aware we don't have that much money, but I just want to talk about products here. Now, the deal is, if we're delivering to a private company, but we're not delivering the product to the town, that actually means the private company can sell that at whatever price they like, and we're going to get a commission for it, which is great. You can make profit off that, sure. However, if we take this product and then ship it to the next industry and then ship the finished product over to the town, we can control what price we want to set for the product, which means we can make significantly more profit. That might not be something we can do straight away, of course, because we aren't <laughs> particularly good for money, uh, but uh, it should be pretty good because I think eventually this means we can really dig in. And once we've got properly set up with a, a proper production line, we can actually probably afford to do some more advanced things than horses. And another thing, we have actually run out of horses because unless Lumpkin gets any bigger and to do that, it needs to have transport to other towns, which if you haven't noticed, going to be a bit of a tricky one without boats. So we've, we don't have any more horses. We really have to hope this goes well. And then we'll bring the oil to the petroleum refinery and then petroleum to the town. And then maybe, just maybe, we can afford some boats to go over to the mainland. And we can maybe even do some trains at that point. Who knows? But that is fantastic to see. Look at that. It's still a minus, but the earnings are creeping up very slowly. The, the money is still going down. The money is still going down. But I think in a minute or two, this is going to go to break even, maybe even some profit. Ah, uh, this is what I'm talking about, making some good money. And thinking about that, actually, what we can do is we can cut back. I was initially planning to use this again at some point for the wooden resource, which is over here. But then come to think of that, we don't really need to because the wood's over here and the sawmill's here. So we're just going to ship from here, surely. That makes a lot more sense uh, because I was going to ship it over here and then ship it from the dock that I'm inevitably going to build here. It actually makes a lot of sense to destroy some of these terminals because all we're doing is dropping off. So if I go like that and then like that and then like that and then like that, there we go. And then now that could save us a bit of money. Awesome. Oh, it's getting close. It's, it's going to be a close one. Can we break even before we go into debt, I wonder? That's going to be a good question. One thing I have noticed here, actually, is these drivers. They seem to have found a shorter route. No, 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 I can't have them doing that. I need them to follow this route because otherwise we'll have traffic jams. We can't be doing with those. So what we need to do is we need to actually put a waypoint in about there. We'll go from that one there into there. And then now what they do is they go straight through. The reasoning for this, if I have people crossing lanes, right, like switching lanes, I can't be doing that because what happens when they switch lanes is the horses are going to get stuck behind one another. Like they're going to be blocking the road. If I have them always in one lane, that's the pretty much never changing lane here. Like they're always in the same lane all the way around, right? But like only issue is here, of course, but I can, I can work with that when I've got money and there's a lot of traffic, which there isn't that much right now, as you can see. Uh, wow, this money is uh, is an issue. Only 170k left in the bank. I don't want the workers to strike against me, so I really do hope we can make enough money to pay their wages. But it's getting really close. Only 160k left and we're still in minus 30k profit. Can we make this, I wonder? Oh, it's actually so close right now. I can't believe this. It, oh, this is going to be incredibly close. Okay, so I've actually got this number down to about 1 to 5k is kind of the range it's sort of going at here. And I think that if we delete this little bit of tarmac here, it might just be enough to knock down that maintenance price. So it will cost a bit of money here, but hopefully this can save what we want to do. So we just get rid of these, get rid of all these. I didn't really want to do that too much with you because I wanted to use those to, uh, to expand to over there. Uh, but oh well, let's see if that fixes the issue. It's, uh, it should do, hopefully. Uh, so it's flicking between the two, but it is making profit, I think, which is great. Tiny bit of profit. It's enough to live off. Probably enough to pay for your rent. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's working. Very nice. Okay, so I'll give it a minute to just balance out the numbers a little bit. But once I've done that, we can actually get on to doing products. Yay! So while that's happening, I might as well explain. You can see at the bottom here, I've got the ability to place industries and towns. But hang on a second, you can't do that in the vanilla game. Well, let me explain. I do indeed have the ability to purchase towns and industries, however, for a very high cost. And the reason for this, simply, is that I'm not going to be able to afford any of this at the moment, so I have to use other people's infrastructure. 
But in the future, I'll probably have enough money to be able to do my own fancy pants stuff, like investing into starting my own oil business, for example. Awesome, so I'm going to save up enough money to be able to build a road to this petroleum refinery over here. And then after that, we can probably, in fact, we might even be able to at the same time, if we've got enough money, uh, bring the petroleum to the town. Let's see, because actually, I think about it, I do, need, I do need to ship to here, because the more residents, of course, the more... I can do horses, so that's going to be handy. Let's do it. We've saved up about 360,000, which is brilliant. However, something that needs to be noted. We can go ahead and build our road over here to in here, and then our road over here to over here. However, the issue is, um, if I do that, I am not going to have enough money to go ahead and put this station in over here. As you can see, this is going to cost a lot of money, 400,000. So, the solution is going to have to be, we're going to have to do a gamble. Yeah. We're going to have to take a loan out to be able to pay for this, and we're going to have to hope and pray this makes us enough money, which it should do, to be fair, so that's good. Um, but, I cannot do this, because if I was to build a road, like, from, say, to here, to here, and then wait for the money to be able to build a road from here to here, the issue is, by doing this road here, I'm actually paying for the maintenance of that road, which means I will be doing a bit of a loss, which basically means we won't be making any money to be able to afford that road at all, which means we're going to have to take a loan out here. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to take a loan. I'll play it safe and just take 1 million, I think, uh, which is, it sounds like a lot. It's not. It goes really quickly. So if we get our station, now what do we want? We want a, I do want two platforms on this actually, because I am going to be doing exporting. So if we get that platform back on there and what we can do is we can just use the uh, 10 meter long platform and we can always add to the other platform a little later on but there we go if we put that down just like about i'm gonna say there that's good uh so what can happen now they can drop off on that side and they can spin around and pick up from this side so what we can do here if we want we can actually go and get to cargo and then we can just add to it but that's like 105 each time and we aren't making anything at the minute so we can actually ignore that right now and what we can do is we can go to our roads we can go and drag this road into here. And I want to try and get a cheapest cost as possible. So you can see that's not the best opportunity. If we go from maybe like here, that's not a bad idea. If we go from like here, bring that along. And I'm going to do it in small sections just so it's actually following the terrain. Because if you just get the game to do it for you, it actually just digs a hole through the terrain usually, which costs a hell of a lot of money. Like if I just go down a step here, you can see that's 115,000. That's a lot of money, so we can't be doing with that. Uh, but we will connect this stuff up to uh, to this road over here, which I think shouldn't be too bad. Let's dig into the rain a little bit there. It's not ideal. So what I'm going to do in that, actually, I'm going to bring this one, uh, like, to there, let's say. And then we'll go from there to there. There we go. Cool, that road is in. Perfect stuff. And then now we can bring our road to, like, there. And then we'll go to, like, there. And then to... Oh, there's a bit of a bump there, but that'll do. And then we'll go to there, and then we can bring that one into there. Uh, I could actually go as far as to bring in this road into there. Um, but we, we, we won't, because <laughs> that costs money. But I think that should be good. So what we need to do is vehicle management. We'll go to vehicles here. Now, we need to think about how much we're going to swap over. Because these are all our vehicles. These are all we've got. So if we go maybe with like three, I think, and we change that one over to lump fuel two, and then we can hopefully see the amount of uh, fuel being about the same as these new guys pick it up and take it where it needs to go to the petroleum refinery. So I'm actually going to go to the line one. I'm going to add just a couple more to line two. Uh, and I think the thing is, I don't want to, it's balancing, right? Because if I take things off line one, then we're going to be producing less. But if I don't put enough on line two, then we're going to be wasting resources because they'll be sitting around. So it's kind of a balance. You know what, actually, it might be a plan if we just get another five and then just ship what's here. And then we can go from there and maybe put some back onto line one. Uh, just because we have actually just got a lot of stuff sitting around right now. That That is probably the best option. We will lose a little bit of money because some of the vehicles I've just assigned to line two are like all the way over here, for example. Uh, so we don't want to be uh, we don't want to be losing money, of course. But we probably will in this uh, in this next little bit of time. But I think I should work pretty well. Let's find out. Ah, OK. I've spotted a little inefficiency here. So the vehicles are coming in like this. And then they're going along here and they're going all the way by the looks of it down here they're picking up and then they're going back on themselves all the way down here and then they're going out that's such like a, a an inefficiency there right i don't like that so we'll put a one way in which i didn't really want to do to be honest with you but it looks like we're gonna have to we'll put that there and then they can pull in uh we're gonna have to put the one there aren't we oh no 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 money money is not great at the minute uh we put that in there and then we put this guy oh sharp turn no horrible 
uh, like that then, and then that can go into, into there. That is a crazy junction. Let's go and put that out of its misery, and then put that like that. There we go. That is, is bonkers. That looks so ugly, but I think it works. Let's see how the line's doing now. So he's pulling in there. That's funky. Okay, I, d I really don't like this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and do my best to just do a temporary solution. We could just delete this road here, like that, and that road there, and that'll save us on maintenance. And then we can bring this road. Nope, not like that. And we can bring this road down there. And that road in to... Okay, fine, into there. Okay, right. This might help. Okay, so what's happening now? They're pulling in here. They're going straight down here, the same as before, which is not ideal, but uh, we can work on that in the future, of course. It just works for now at a basic level. Uh, they're coming down here and they're going around this corner, picking up and then leaving. That is pretty good. It could be better, don't get me wrong, but that is pretty good, considering like the, what, what we just had to go through. It's a good solution for the time being. So we're, we'll see if this makes any money. It is very crowded, this platform, so I might actually go ahead and just flick a couple more of these guys. I really don't want to be uh, doing too many because I really do want to keep the production high. But then again, I want to be uh, shipping the products I'm making or I'm just wasting them because uh, we don't want that. <laughs> we really don't. Wasting products is never good. But while we're waiting to find out if that does anything, let's do the final thing, which is going to be our drop off. We need to do this before we run out of money. We need to drop off our finished product. So we'll get a truck unload stop. Now this road, it looks like covers most of industrial. I think I'm right there. So how much can we fit on here? Like, is it, how many houses can we afford to miss? It looks like the main, they're using this road as the main road. So if we just have the drop off here anyway, it might, on the one hand, it'll be handy because it's on the main road. But on the other hand, it might block the horse and carts. But thinking about it, there isn't that much traffic on the road anyway. If we go ahead and we put, oh, actually no, because it needs to turn around. Oh no, no, we can't have that there then. Okay, so if we go down that road then and we're gonna drop off like say, let's say there. Okay, that covers most of the town. And then we go from a new line, we'll call this Lump Fuel 3, make it black. Okay, and then last thing is we're gonna go to line one. I'm gonna take, let's say, what, okay, I'm just gonna go with one and we'll put that onto the line three there. Okay, I think we're pretty well balanced for the most part. Let's uh, let's have a look here. Well, we are actually massively producing here in this uh, industry we're using. Seven barrels of fuel waiting. So for that reason, I'm going to add one more of these vehicles to line three. Uh, now, we are actually running really low on vehicles for that one. So I do hope now we're shipping these goods, the town size does increase so we can get some more horses. Uh, but wow, that is, a, that is an interesting start. I bet you've never seen that on a Transport Fever series before, eh? Well, if you want to see some more of it, press the subscribe button and click this video to see the next one right here.